Hello again, it's your internet dad sharing life lessons with you that I offered my own sons in the hope that they'll be useful to you. Do remember if you like these uh, videos, become a subscriber. Uh, videos come out on a whole slew of different subjects uh, twice a week. Today's talk is on calling 911. It's a number of series of under what circumstances would you call 911 and what should you do about it. This one is entitled Call 911 uh, if you witness violence. Now I'm not a policeman, I'm not EMS trained, I'm just a citizen, but I've seen a number of violent uh, episodes in my life and this is how I would suggest you respond. Firstly, if you see uh, some people or an individual being attacked, your first instinct might be to rush in to help them. Don't. You are no use to anyone if you're dead or seriously injured. Your first duty as a good citizen is to call 911 and get the police and EMS involved. The dispatcher will respond to you on a recorded line and ask you what you need. Most importantly, while you're making the call, look around and see where you are exactly so you can describe it. Uh, the cross street, a building number, or a large public building that people will be able to recognize. The police can triangulate on your cell phone uh, uh, message, but it's much faster if you can tell them where you are and if you can tell them in a calm voice exactly what's going on. If there is shooting, uh, run away. If you can't run away, uh, lie down. Uh, bullets that ricochet off uh, uh, a roadway will then climb and you have a better chance of survival. But do remember that real gunfire is a lot louder than Hollywood movies would suggest, so the shooter may be further away than you think. By now you should hear sirens going off two or three different directions and you know that help is on the way, you've done your job. But you still shouldn't get involved unless there's a large crowd that is now restraining the people and there's no evidence of gunfire. Hang around so you can talk to the police or you will likely be called back uh, by the dispatcher because they got your number. Now the reason for the subtitle here, uh, as in, you didn't mention the gun, is that many years ago in a um, major US city, uh, I was able to prevent an abduction of a young woman. I was in a taxi by myself at a stoplight uh, when a car ran the red light, crossed in front of the taxi, halted, doors opened and two men grabbed a woman on the sidewalk. I shouted to the cab driver uh, to block the car. Uh, he said, this is not a good idea. He's probably the only sensible man there. Uh, I jumped out, held the door open and grabbed one of the men. The woman ducked under my arm, scrambled into the back of my taxi. I followed her, shut the door. Now the taxi driver didn't need any further instructions. He put the boot down and we shot up uh, the avenue at high speed. After a few blocks, we made the turn onto the street where my apartment building was concerned, or was, was located. And um, as we were driving there, I looked back through the rearview mirror and I saw the car uh, go straight past my street at high speed. Uh, he did not see us make the turn and we were safe for the moment. Arriving in my apartment building, I grabbed um, the Dorman's uh, telephone uh, 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 because in those days we didn't all have smartphones and I called 911. I explained uh, that I'd witnessed uh, an attempted abduction, abduction and that I had the person uh, with me. Uh, the, the woman concerned was uh, hysterical, 
and was shouting in a foreign language, I didn't know what she was saying. But I was promised a squad car on its way. Ten minutes passed, fifteen minutes passed, and nothing happened, so I called again. Explained the same circumstances, promised the squad car. Didn't happen. On the third time, I called 911 and I said, look, this is the third time I've called. This was an abduction. Uh, the girl is uh, terrified and I don't know uh, who it was that tried to do it, but she's safe for the moment, but I'm worried for the future. Perhaps I got the uh, dispatcher that I'd had earlier on, I don't know, but certainly the dispatcher recognized my frustration. And after a slight pause, she said, you didn't mention the gun. And I was puzzled by this and I, I said to her, well, there wasn't a gun. And she said, again, you didn't mention the gun. And that immediately, I knew what she was talking about, what she was trying to tell me, is that at certain times of the day, uh, there's a triage in terms of the uh, EMS and police and fire. And lesser and non-violent situations will get a lower priority. And I took that lesson on board. Now this story ended up well. Uh, the young woman was able to calm down and talk in English and she was able to be returned to her family with no harm. But many of those stories end badly. And so you have to remember, be a good communicator. Don't be a dead hero. And if you think you saw a gun or a knife, for goodness sake, tell the dispatcher. It will get a faster response and it may save lives. Now I'm hoping you don't witness anything like this yourself. But if you think it's good advice, by all means, share the link with a friend. It could save his life. Till next time.